Okay, we're gonna try taking out the rear springs on this 1983 280 SL. Um, we've already taken off the rear stabilizer bar. We've taken out the shock absorber. And to get this rear spring out, the safe way to get it out is to use a spring extractor or compressor. Now, I have covered this tool in a previous video when we, we did this front subframe the rear springs are actually larger and they will be using these two discs here so we're just going to have a go at putting those discs in the spring winding up the spring and seeing if we can get that out so these two plates are different and this one here with the grooves in is going to be the top plate and this is basically going to go underneath like so and spin round and lock in like that that is going to be the bottom plate. It'll obviously be the other way around. Put this top plate in. Make sure you don't put it with this flat edge round like that because when you wind the spring up, it's going to catch on there. You want to have the open end there like so. So this spring extractor is not anywhere near here. The plate we're going to put in at the bottom um, of the spring and just make sure you get it the right way around. It's just going to fit in like that. It's not too critical, the orientation of that. And then we've just got to thread in the um, middle centre shaft. That threaded through the top. It's important that you rotate it so it locks into the grooves. I can't do that one handedly, so I'm going to do that off camera, I think. It's locked in now. Probably can't see that on camera. Okay, now it's time to start winding that spring in. Spring is aligned properly, the teeth are in the right grooves. It should just be a matter of winding this up with a wrench. Um, that is how to safely remove the rear springs on a Mercedes 180, sorry, 280SL and we're just going to undo that now and take the tension off the spring to keep it safe. So you've loosened that off sufficiently, hopefully not take it all the way out. We should just be able to turn that and pull that out. Sometimes you have to move these things around a bit. Send yourself out like so, and there we have it. Take out the top seal. This one is absolutely fine. We'll put that on top of the springs. Those springs will be sent off together with the rest of the rear subframe to get powder coated. Now that we've got the spring out, let's undo these bolts and see what the state of these um, subframe rear subframe mountings is is like these whoa rear subframe mount bolts 17 mil at the back and not one super tight um those two came off quite easy let's just try this center one now see how that goes what i'd suggest you do before you take this center bolt out is actually support the subframe with a jack or something like that otherwise this will come falling down and you're in danger of bending this fitting here so we're just going to take that off Pretty under there. Let's take this off. Whoa. Pop that seal out and have a little look how that looks. Well, that seal wasn't doing much. You can see that the centre section has just come straight out, which hopefully should mean that the outer rubber section works pretty easily. Oh, famous last words. That's stuck in there. We're gonna see if we can get that off off camera. 
Sometimes the easiest thing is just to burn those out. I'm assuming if I let that um, control arm down a little bit, we'll be able to get that seal out. Let's just try that. to reuse that or not you can when you buy the um, rear subframe mount you either come as a kit with all the bolts and hardware which is really super expensive <laughs> or you can just buy the actual seal and ring separately I think um, the actual mount itself is about 60 euros from MB parts in, in Germany and you can get this separately for about seven euros so I think main subframe mount off. The only thing that's holding this lower control arm on is these two uh, control arm bolts. You're probably going to need a breaker bar to break them. Very difficult to get an impact wrench or anything like that in there. I don't know how we're going to get to that one but we're going to start off by taking this one off. The bolt is really awkward to get to so we're doing it with two 24 mil sockets, one on either side. I think we're just about there now off and that is actually the easy one to get off now we've got to try and get the other one off okay that other bolt lower control arm bolt was actually the easy one to get out the next one we've got to try and get out is this one here and we can get an open-ended spanner on this fitting here we're just holding it in place with the um, jack and then we should be able to hopefully a breaker bar on the other side so we've got a long extension and with a breaker bar we should be able to get that um for myself of which way to go it's this way here okay that with a breaker bar and we can now get a standard wrench on there and we should be able to get that off and we should just be able to tap that bolt out now and same on the other side and this control arm should be free apart from this brake cable which i believe you have to take these emergency brake off to get to the other end you could also potentially detach that from the handbrake or foot brake end but i think we're gonna see if we can take these off there's just enough room to get this bolt out without scratching that bit of and the car there goes through the rear subframe mount is a great bolt for punching out these bolts from the control arm okay this lower control arm rear control arm here is now just attached by this cable here and we're going to try and take this cable out from the back of the hub it's quite difficult to do and the first thing we're going to need to do is take off these um, emergency brake shoes um, or park brake shoes and to do that um, we're going to use a special tool to go through this hole here that basically pushes these springs in twists them around once we've got these springs off we should be able to take the top springs off and then take these out so let's have a go at doing that okay so just arrived in the post today is this little tool here and um, Mercedes have a special tool as well, which costs an absolute fortune. This particular one we got from eBay, uh, laser number 6756, cost just over five pounds. Let's see if it works. Now the idea is you just go through one of the holes, push this spring down like so, and twist, and that should come, famous last words, should come right out like so. That's what the spring looks like. Let's just take that outside. Yeah. And it goes down a lot deeper than you think. And the end of this tool has basically got a groove in it that fits. It's an awful lot easier using this tool than it is trying to get a screwdriver down there or a pair of needle nose pliers. 
got less chance of damaging the spring as well. The spring should be just as easy. That one doesn't want to come out. Oh, well, it was a bit trickier to get that one out. There he is. Okay. Even when you've got the right tool, this spring or these springs can be really tricky to get out. When they're locking the brake shoes in, this top bit of spring is going to basically be at three o'clock or perpendicular to this circumference here. And when the spring comes out, you're going to be turning it 90 degrees. And this is going to be parallel to this, this top bit. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, as I say, even when it's in the right position to come out, it's still quite a lot of wiggling to get that spring out. So these brake shoes are basically held in place by those two springs. And then we just got to undo the top or the bottom spring to basically lift them over the hub. The bottom springs can be quite tricky to get off. I usually start with the bottom one. And although it's much better to use a um, special tool, the bottom spring tends to be quite easy to get a screwdriver behind and pull like so. And that should allow you to get that spring out. Uh, you can sort of begin to take these out. Okay, just be very careful that when you take this out, you remember how it goes back together. Now that we've got these shoes off the car, we can take a closer look at them. Um, this here, these grooves here fit into these slots. There's one groove on each side for the slots here. So that will kind of fit there like this. And this uh, cog is basically the adjuster which you turn to either push the brakes out or to pull them in. And this little fitting comes apart like so. So what you want to do when you put this back together is make sure you get a little bit of dab of high temperature grease in there. Um, and similarly on this screw thread, basically this screws in and out here effectively to adjust the brake. Um, and this spring, the reason this is difficult to get the top spring out first is because of the angle of these, really. You need these shoes angled like that to be able to get that spring off. I haven't decided yet whether we're going to just replace all these springs with a fitting kit. You can see that that's quite rusty, but if we pop that in a rust bath, that'll come out absolutely fine. I've seen an awful lot worse. They don't look in any danger that they're about to um, break or anything. No pun intended. This bottom string is actually really tricky to get out and if you try pulling it out this way you'll be there all day. The way to do it is to actually take the whole brake cable mechanism and push it down towards the ground. That should allow you to get that spring out through the other side like so. Once you've got that spring out of the way you should be able to take this brake mechanism pull it towards you and then this bit here folds over and that should allow you to get access to the cable to disconnect it here so you've got to disconnect the cable from this mechanism here and to do that you just need to push out the center fitting I'm just going to do it with a little um whoops try not to lose it and do it with a little allen key and then that should da, 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 allow you to get this off like that and then that should allow this cable to pull through we hope okay now that we've got this part brake mechanism off let's just have a quick look at it this here is what holds the cable on there's no clips or anything holding that on okay this clip, this spring here, which we eventually got off, sits on top. I'm just putting it back together roughly how it is so we don't forget that we've got some kind of record of how it all goes back together. When you come to put this back together, you want to make sure there's a bit of high temperature grease here and here because those bits, that's is where the adjuster sits, is actually moving metal to metal. And similarly down here, where the handbrake is pulling when you pull it on, that these bits here, you want to make sure actually lubricated here and here just to make sure that these bits move freely and the mechanism sits in there like that with this spring basically sitting on top like so 
and the action of pushing this or pulling this with the cable is spreading those shoes out slightly like that and we'll do a whole video on putting this back together again I think because to adjust it when you put it back in you've got to have this touching the inside of the hub and then you've got to back it off slightly this fitting here is attached to this pipe here okay and it's bolted onto the back of the hub here yours may be rusted solid on there and all you have to do is basically get something like a screwdriver and just pry this loose um, I've got a little bit of WD-40 on there and that's just pushed in there. It does eventually come out like that. Okay, so that is bolted on. That just pushes straight into there. So there we go. And once we've got that cable free, I was going to say once we've got that cable free, we should be able to take the whole control arm off. I've just realized it's not quite as simple as that, so we're just gonna have to figure out how to get out of these things here. Okay, the only way to get that handbrake cable off the control arm is to detach it at the actual handbrake or foot brake if you've got one. And to do that, you have to lift up this section of trim here. Now on this particular car, it's not actually screwed down, but I imagine there's a, there's a screw, or there should be a screw here possibly on the top as well just there and that would allow you to um, expose this here so I'm assuming that this clip here just springs up and it would just be able to pull that through quite how we're ever going to get it back connected again is of course another question okay to get that clip off you just need to get a screwdriver down the little slot here and then kind of twist it up hopefully without damaging the paint too much. I'm gonna get some more bits on there, pull that out. Okay. There we go, that's that clip off and it just lifts straight out of there and it's got a little rubber shim on the end of it which you're probably gonna to have to take off. We'll just put that there temporarily and that should I'm hoping allow us to somehow pull the cable through that hole. Okay, that now allows us to pull that through there and hopefully it's just a matter of pulling the other end of the cable until it comes through. Okay, we should in theory just be able to pull this through there. I'm going to do that off camera. If all goes to plan, we should be able to... Oops. Just pull that through, through there and have a look at that. So there you have it, both ends of the handbrake cable. This end here is the end that attaches to the handbrake in the car. And this is the end that attaches to the hub. So once we've got that off, we should in theory be able to get the control arm off. Using a little bit of brute force, we should be able to just pull that bolt out. Okay, all the bolts are out. It should just be able to. Do. Whoa, that's heavy. That's sliding this out without damaging it. Whoa, that is heavy. Wow. And there it is the control arm. Whoa, that took some getting out. We haven't quite finished yet because we've still got to take this hub here off so i take this um what's it called i don't know what that's called take that out and actually take the hub off this thing here and then once we've got the hub off we need to try taking this backing plate off because we're going to be refurbing and painting that so but now that we've got the control arm off i'm hoping that i can get two bolts in here to the lug bolts put this in a workmate and then get a special tool on the back of here to actually undo that so let's give that a go my plan is to put two bolts in here and then to clamp this in a vise so that i can turn that because at the moment when i try and turn it it's obviously just um turning i could try and jam something through here but i don't want to damage these threads so let's try it this way first okay, we've got this clamp firmly in a vise now using this laser tool number four eight four six 
It's a specialist socket set for doing jobs just like this. I think the tool that we're gonna need is here. And that should, in theory, these teeth here should exactly fit into those holes and allow us to undo that. So let's give that a go. Just to warn you, you're gonna need to tap this uh, socket into there just to make sure it's properly seated. Well, that bearing is in there, or at least that fitting is in there, so super tight. They're not even with this really long breaker bar, am I able to move that? Um, it's been known to actually break <laughs> really long breaker bars like this, trying to get those undone. So I think what I may have to do is get, either get an impact wrench, which might help, or uh, take that to a friend and get him to help me. So I think I'm going to leave the video here and maybe the next video is going to be about how to get the hub off the lower control arm and also this backing plate here and possibly the rest of the subframe off the car. We paid £5.67 for this spray spring removal tool from these guys here at the Tool Academy via eBay. The removal tool here costs us £39.50 also from eBay from these guys here.